guys sorry for the delay on the homework video I just got done making a bunch of insulative play-doh for us to use tomorrow with our squishy circuits super excited about that um, also the background music today is sunflower from uh, the spider-man into the spider-verse movie it's from DJ Boomin come to you courtesy of Spotify let's go ahead and get started uh, so question two said students are experimenting with states of matter. Water is heated until it begins to boil. What will happen to the water if it continues to boil? And so we're going to get our draw tool out here. I'm going to do a very fun one today. So we're looking at water as it's boiling. If the water is in its state as a liquid, when we apply heat, the water will begin to rise up. We call that evaporation. As it evaporates, it turns into a gas. It does not solidify. That's what happens if we uh, start to remove heat. It's not going to thicken because we're not adding anything to it. And the water is already liquid, so it's not going to melt. Let's take a look at our next question. Uh, I'm not sure which one. Mr. Briggs was helping me crop these. So I'm going to go ahead and do four and five. It's a little bonus for you guys. Number four says students are making jello in class. What will happen to the liquid when it is cooled? So if you know, we first have our pot, we boil the water in our pot, okay? And then we pour in our little packet. Da -da 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 -da. There's all my dust. I put it in a bowl. It's a beautiful different color. But as it starts to cool down, I'm removing the heat. The liquid's not evaporating. Evaporation happens when I add heat. The physical change will change, the physical state will change from liquid to a solid. Well, when I cool things down, I know that if they were a liquid, they go to a solid. So maybe the physical state will remain a liquid. No, the physical state will change from a liquid to a gas. No, again, that's applying heat. So G is our correct answer here. Number five says the change from a solid to a liquid is caused by what? So if I have something that is a solid, let's say like an ice cube, and then I start to add heat, ah, fire hot, okay? I know that when I go from a solid to a liquid, it's not freezing because that would be going the opposite direction. Uh, it's not evaporating because that happens when the liquid turns into a gas. Uh, it's not heating. Wait a second. Oh, the change is caused by what? Okay. Uh, so that one would be heating. Cooling would mean, again, that we're going from the liquid state to the solid. So in this case, C is our best answer choice. Always read these carefully, guys. Even teachers sometimes try to go fast. Next one, number seven. The diagram below shows a model of some particles in a liquid. Which model shows how the particles would appear if it was frozen? Okay, so if I freeze it, remember that's going from a liquid to a solid. I know solids particles are packed tight. So in this case, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. Uh, so I have nine. It's not gonna suddenly multiply, that'd be weird. Uh, this one does have the right amount, but however, those particles aren't packed tight, so I wouldn't choose that as my answer. I have never seen something that was a liquid all of a sudden look like it's in one of those uh, old school snake games on the computer. Our best answer choice is B because it has the nine particles. They're all packed tightly here, and that's what happens when a liquid goes to a solid. Next one. Uh, number eight, the student places four different substances in separate beakers. The student places each beaker on a hot plate, heats the substances for five minutes. Which substance goes through a change in state when tested in this manner? So again, I am applying heat. Ah, so hot. Okay. A penny in five minutes isn't going to change. A craft stick, like a tongue depressor, a popsicle stick, is also not going to change. An ice cube might change. So I put my little maybe dot. Sorry, it's kind of messy. A pebble, that's a rock, guys. So that's not going to change. We think about um, erosion and weathering and how that takes 
a long time for pebbles and rocks to change their shape and to um, smooth out their edges. So that's not gonna be it because we only have five minutes. So our best answer choice here is the ice cube. Plus we know when we apply heat to an ice cube, it will begin to melt into a little puddle. Let's go to our next one. Ooh, pop out of there. All right. Number nine, which question can be answered from the picture below? Do ice cubes sink or float? Well, it doesn't look like I'm testing sink or float because I would see a beaker, I would see it filled with water, and I would see objects in that water testing the density. So A is out. What causes change in states of matter? Maybe, because we do see that whatever this is right here, is changing. It was a solid, now it's turning into a liquid. Do ice cubes have the ability to dissolve in water? Again, I would see a beaker of water if I'm testing the solubility. Okay, so that one's out. Are ice cubes conductors or insulators? Remember guys, with that one we would be using our conductivity meter to test if it's going to be a conductor or an insulator. We look for our buttons to light up. We don't see that here. We see a hot plate. B is our best answer choice. Here we go, last one. Number 10, all the following tools are useful when experimenting with heat except blank, okay? We have a hot plate, remember, that is our semi-cube looking object, our tool that's plugged into the wall, and it's got the little coil there, and it produces heat. So that's useful when experimenting with heat. I wanna know what's not useful. Hot plate, good. Thermometer, remember guys, that one is measuring the temperature. Because I'm measuring the temperature, that's useful because I might want to know the measurement for that temperature. 100 degrees, yay. Okay, that's a good thing. I want to know what's not good. A timer, maybe if I'm wanting to test how long it takes for something to dissolve or to melt or to evaporate, the timer could be useful. Maybe. A spring scale, however, is a scale that you hold by hand. You allow whatever you attach to it to hang down. Let's say it's a bucket right now, okay? And it tells us the measurement, how many, uh, just how much that the measurement is for that. So a spring scale is not gonna be helpful because I'm not measuring how hot it is. I'm not trying to apply heat. I'm not measuring it. And I'm not trying to time it either. So spring scale, is my odd man out? That's my answer, woo woo! So that's all I've got for you guys today. Thanks for watching, please post comments and stay tuned for next week's video.